everybody. Carl and I and the dogs are here today. They're all here. I don't know if you can see them, but they're here. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun. Hey, you could be larger than life. Today, we thought we would talk to you a little bit about retirement planning as far as living in an RV full time. And so we've kind of come up with a little list of things that we just thought we'd share with you guys as we're going through the process of making these plans ourselves, right? Yeah, it's kind of a long haul deal. You don't really, uh, you know, decide on a Monday that you're going to retire the following Monday and get it all planned out. It can sometimes takes years, right? So, but you, you, when you get our age, uh, you need to start thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. At least if you're gonna go full-time in an RV, well, however you're gonna retire, right? I mean, you've gotta make a plan. So some of the things that we've been going through and, and just kind of off the top of my head, as far as living in an RV goes, um, five things that I think that you need to consider or consider as a big part of what you're doing. And the first one is, you better like your travel partner, right? You better. What's not to like? <laughs> you better like the very close quarters. And if you've retired, then you're pretty much full time, you know, together all the time. The togetherness is pretty intense. So you better like your partner. Uh, the second thing is fewer possessions. So this can be a good thing as well as a bad thing. I think from the downside of it, you know, you you cannot get as much stuff in an RV as you can in a house. So you really have to limit what you're using. And um, I've said before that if something's going to take up the real estate on my counter, it better do multiple things, right? Right. So, Same thing with your tools and your tool compartment. I mean, that that kind of rule of thumb is essential to full time living. We, uh, we, I gotta tell you that one of the things a lot of people do is they'll have a shed or they'll rent a, a space at whatever their home base is because you gotta kinda have a home base. You can't, even if you want a full time, that's fine, but you gotta have some place just to keep your winter stuff while you're summer camping and your summer stuff while you're winter camping. So you gotta, you gotta kinda plan for that. It's kinda what we're thinking, yeah. And then on the upside is you have less stuff, right? Lots of less stuff, less emotional stuff to weigh you down. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, number three is you get to see a lot of the country, right? You're going to be traveling, you get to see a lot more stuff, and it's a much safer way to travel these days. And we're all looking for safer ways to travel. And at some point, you'll have to factor in Fuel costs, what is it gonna take me to get there? Uh, from a fuel standpoint, you're always going to eat. So your food expenses are kind of a given because you've gotta eat, right? But you don't necessarily need to leave Las Vegas and head for Mount Rushmore if you don't have the funds to cover your fuel costs, right? Your travel costs. So you always gotta to wanna to kinda of do a mini budget before you leave your current place to go to your next place. Well, and that's in our next section. Oh, okay, so well, just look at me. Following up. Um, number five in this section is meeting people. Um, and you don't have to like to meet people to become a full-time RVer, but it is part of what we like about RVing, right? We like meeting new people. We like the opportunity to meet people all over this country. Unless they're mean, and then we don't want to meet them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was the RVing portion. The next portion is, okay, how do we get there, right? How do you Oh, make, I did jump ahead, didn't I? How do you make the plan to get there? And number one is calculate how much you're going to need. All of those calculations, everything, you know, from, from if you have a payment on your RV, to do you have HOA dues where you're staying? Or are you going to snowboard? Are you gonna go back and forth between uh, different places? You know, how, how much are you gonna need? What does that look like? And then number two is figure out how much you have. So if you're retiring, you know that you're gonna have um, social security or um, Pension, annuities. Or 401k. Or, right, or, are you yeah. gonna work camp? 
are you going to work? Um, lots of people work, uh, you know, into their 70s. Um, and, um, you know, so how much are you going to have? And then figure out the difference, right? So once you figure out that difference, how are you going to get there? How are you going to make that difference up, right? Mm -hmm. And don't forget about um, RV warranties, uh, extra insurance, medical insurance if you need it, um, all of those other things that are going to happen and the cost of inflation. So, you know, do, do a long-term schedule as far as what you're looking at. But don't get discouraged because you, everybody can make their budget work for what they want to do. Sometimes you have to sacrifice over here so that you can get what you want to do over there. But everybody can make it work. And while retirement's not going to happen for us for some time, it's never too early to start planning and to start thinking about it. Yeah, and I'm, things like, I'm not going to need a bug man anymore. I'm not going to need the yard guy anymore. When she says bug man, she means exterminator. <laughs> He's my bug man. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're going to be able to cut costs as well. So you've got to take all those things into consideration and see where you land. And now with our third dog, we're not going to be able to go anywhere. <laughs> we're just dog parents now. <laughs> but we did have to get pet insurance, right? So those are things that you have to factor into all of that, right? Um, and then the other thing is, um, so how, how does that look how, in your retirement? Are you going to, uh, Truman is eating the tripod. Hold on one moment. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Come here. I'm sure that interfered with the shot. <laughs> Let me get him. Hey. He's he's teething, so he's literally <sighs> chewing on everything right now. <laughs> you crazy dog. And he's getting big, isn't he? He's like he's just crazy. Yeah. So anyway, um, I guess what I was gonna mention was um, snowbirding versus a tiny home. Some of the things that we're looking into are uh, you can buy small tiny homes in RV parks. A lot of them, um, what do they call them, park models? Yeah. And they're just meant at, at, to be no more than maybe 300 square feet in an RV park. And um, once you pay cash for those, and they're very inexpensive, anywhere from 25000 to 50000 for some of the two, and even I've seen three-bedroom models. Sometimes even cheaper, and usually on that same lot, there will be a small shed. Uh-huh, so. or a carport. Um, and then you, ha you would have also a s association dues or HOA dues as affiliated with that. And that's different from all over the country, right? You can get them very inexpensively, um, I, and so kind of we're weighing those costs, right? Versus snowboarding, which is where you go spend six months in Southern Texas for the winter and maybe you spend the other six months uh, traveling to colder climates in the summer to yeah, you know, going take north. advantage yeah. of the weather, the good weather. That's why they call it snowboarding. Um, and what, what's associated with those costs? So there's so many different ways you can buy RV lots. You could buy acreage and put an RV lot on it. You could, I think one of the advantages in my opinion, because we're kind of negotiating our, our differences of what we want right now, is if you just snowbird, right? If you just travel from uh, one park for six months at a time or three months at a time, then you don't have all the costs associated with ownership, right? You're not going to have to fix it up or fix anything that gets broken or take care of the yard. Somebody else is doing that for you. Yeah, good point. I mean, maybe you have a storage unit in whatever you consider your hometown and that's all you have there, mm. but you will probably find that you need some place to keep stuff, yeah. whether you own a lot or you don't and you're just kind of a nomad. That's fine. That's a good way to do it, but you're probably going to want a storage unit somewhere. Yeah, we're kind of thinking that um, whatever rig we stay in or live in isn't going to have enough storage space initially to accommodate us. I mean, we'll get the hang of this, and I've known other people who start out with all this stuff, you know, everywhere, and then they find they really don't need it. And I've said before, if you have something in your garage, say, or in a cabinet that you haven't used in a year, you don't need it, right? Yeah, toss it. <laughs> <laughs> 
and then um, how to plan for it. And, and one of those things which I already mentioned was uh, planning it out, working your plan, um, warranties on your rig. Are you going to just keep maintenance costs in a savings account? And how much do you think you're gonna need for that? And I've seen estimates of about $200 a month or $1,200 a year for maintenance costs over the, over the time. Mm -hmm. So figure out what that looks like to you and how you're gonna save for that. So these are just all things that, that we've been working on and trying to figure out before we actually pull that cord and say, we're doing it. So make sure you do this too, because a lot of times as we get older, we run into health issues. Don't let your health issues decide what you do or don't do. Figure out a way to work around those issues and follow your dream. And if your dream is the full time in your later years, figure out a way to do it. Yeah, you can do it. Everybody, everybody can do it. It just might look different for you. And there are ADA rigs out there. There, there are wheelchair accessible RVs mm -hmm. nowadays. I think they're much more accommodating than they used to be for those kinds of situations. And get on the, on the Facebook group pages. We find some very helpful information in our community as well as other group communities. Let social media be your friend. And there's a lot of stuff out there that probably or may not apply to you but you will find niches within social media, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or what have you, that answer your questions. Yeah. And all you gotta do is be willing to invest the time to look those over. I know uh, our neighbors, Gary and Mandy, they do that, they do a lot of research through social media. My brother, Jim, you've met him, he does it. Everybody kind of uses social media um, to get answers to their to their questions. It starts with Google and it ends with YouTube. I mean, it's, it's the whole spectrum, right? So uh, there are answers to your questions out there. And if you have questions about anything we've talked about, either today or any other time, make sure you put them in the comments below and we will answer to the best of our ability or we'll send you toward resources that can answer your questions. There's some amazing people out there in our community that are so helpful and so wise and they've been doing this a lot longer than we have so they've probably run into your problem and, and it's great to reach out to them. And I know you know this because if you've watched our channel, full timing is our goal and it's been our passion for a long time. We enjoy this lifestyle, um, and we we have had a lot of, not every, but we've had a lot of experiences, so we can answer a lot of questions. And like I said, if we can't, we'll send you someplace where you can find your answers. Yep, yep. So we're here for you guys, and we hope you're all here for each other. And the best way to do that is subscribe to the channel. Yeah, subscribe. and like we always love those thumbs yeah, up hit that like button and of course spread us out share the channel yes please it helps us out i mean we're, just not, we're not making any money at this right now for us it's just fun and as you know we don't always meet our goals but we try really hard yeah we've, we've been a little herky-jerky with our schedule lately of getting some good content out there for you and we know that and you know that but uh these kind of chats we think can be helpful for you and sometimes when we are homebound and can't get out in our rig or go travel and show you new and exciting things, this is a, this is what we have for you. So uh, we appreciate you watching us. We love our subscribers and those that tune into our channel. We don't take you for granted. We're not out to make money. This is our hobby. Uh, and thank you for watching us today. And guess what? We'll see you next week. <laughs>